Welcome to CoreLogic's update on the housing market for September 2018. The last month of winter saw the housing market correction deepen, with dwelling values falling across five of Australia's eight capital cities. CoreLogic's national index was down three-tenths of a percent over the month, taking the cumulative decline since values peaked in September last year down 2.2%. Over the year to date, national dwelling values are down 1.9%. However, the weakest performing cities have been Sydney and Melbourne, where dwelling values were previously rising the fastest, but have now fallen by 3.5% and 3.3% respectively over the first eight months of the year. Considering the sheer size of these cities, Sydney and Melbourne comprise approximately 60% of Australia's housing market by value and about 40% by number, the weaker performance in these cities is having a significant drag down effect on the combined capitals and the national reading of the market. Hobart stands out as showing the highest rate of capital gains so far this year, with dwelling values up 5.6%. Values have trended higher in Brisbane, in Adelaide and Canberra over the past year to date, but are lower in Perth and Darwin as well as the Sydney and Melbourne markets. The overall housing market weakness is heavily concentrated across the premium sector of the market. CoreLogic recorded a 5.4% fall in values across the upper quartile of the combined capital cities over the past 12 months, while the broad middle of the market is down half a percent over the year, and the most inexpensive quartile has recorded a 0.6% rise in value. This trend towards weaker premium housing market conditions is largely attributable to the larger falls across Sydney and Melbourne's most expensive quarter of properties, where values are down 8.1% and down 5.2% over the past 12 months. Melbourne is showing the most significant variation between the broad valuation segments, with the more affordable quarter of the market recording a 6% rise in values over the past year, while the most expensive quarter is actually down 5.2%. The trend towards more robust housing market conditions for affordable properties can be seen geographically as well, with the top 10 capital city subregions, based on an annual capital gain, generally located in more affordable areas such as Hobart, the outskirts of Melbourne, and parts of Brisbane and Adelaide. On the other hand, the weakest performing subregions are particularly located across Sydney, as well as Melbourne's prestigious Inner East. Stronger market conditions across Australia's more affordable areas are likely attributable to a rise of first home buyers in the marketplace, as well as changing credit policies focusing on reducing exposure to high debt to income ratios. In the higher value cities like Sydney and Melbourne, we're seeing typical dwelling prices remain more than eight times higher than median household incomes, suggesting tighter credit conditions for borrowers with a high debt to income ratio will likely impact on demand more in these cities than others. The regional markets have also continued to weaken, with values slipping lower for the second consecutive month across the combined rest of state index to be down 0.2% over the month and 0.6% lower over the rolling quarter. Regional areas of the mining states continue to deliver the most significant drag on the headline growth rates, with values down 3.5% over the past three months across regional WA and 1% lower across regional Queensland. Drilling down across the capital city shows an even more diverse performance. For a brief period earlier in the year, Perth's housing market was showing some positive month-on-month -month improvements in housing values. However, values have ticked lower over each of the past four months to be down 2.3% over the first eight months of the year. The local unit market has recorded weaker conditions relative to houses, with unit values down 5.5% over the year to date, while house values are down a lower 1.5%. Vendors are understandably reluctant to sell their property with conditions remaining soft. In fact, new listing numbers are tracking at a six year low and we're yet to see the normal seasonal ramp up in listing numbers in line with spring. Weaker housing market conditions can be tied back to a variety of factors, foremost of which is the tighter credit environment which has slowed market activity, especially amongst investors. Fewer active buyers has led to higher inventory levels and reduced competition in the marketplace. Collectively, these factors have been compounded by affordability challenges, reduced foreign investment and a rise in housing supply. The ongoing credit reform and focus on reducing household debt exposures imply that credit availability will likely remain tight for the foreseeable future. Lenders are likely to remain competitive for high quality borrowers 
However, premiums on interest-only loans and investment loans look set to stay for the time being, which will continue to quell market activity. The latest credit data from the Reserve Bank shows that housing credit growth was tracking at just 5.5%, which is the slowest rate of annual housing credit growth since December 2013. The slowdown is most evident across the investor segment, where credit growth fell to 1.5%, which is the slowest annual pace on record. The tightening of credit has coincided with an ongoing reduction in buying activity. Nationally, settled sales are down almost 10% year on year, with more substantial falls recorded in Sydney and Melbourne, where annual sales were 18% and 15% lower. As buyer activity has slowed, advertised inventory levels have accumulated. Capital city listings are now 9% higher than a year ago, and that's despite fresh stock being added to the marketplace tracking 4% lower than a year ago. The rise in advertised stock levels is simply due to a slower rate of absorption as home sales take longer and fewer properties sell at auction. The median selling time for private treaty sales has extended out to 52 days across the combined capitals. A year ago, homes were selling in 43 days. Additionally, vendors are having to discount their prices by a larger amount in order to make a sale, with the median vendor discount rising from 5.9% a year ago to 6.5%. Similarly, auction markets have weakened with clearance rates generally tracking around the mid to low 50% range across most major auction markets. Higher stock levels, less competition amongst buyers, longer selling times and lower clearance rates clearly point to conditions favouring buyers over sellers. As the market moves into spring, we expect to see advertised stock levels rising, but we aren't likely to see a commensurate rise in buyer numbers, implying some tough selling conditions through spring. Add to this the additional uncertainty around mortgage rates pushing a little bit higher due to the increased funding costs, increased political uncertainty due to the recent leadership spill and approaching election, and it becomes even more likely the remainder of the year will see housing values trend lower. If you'd like to follow the most timely housing market indicators, make sure you stay up to date at www.corelogic.com.au.